Good morning, beloveds. So in the <laughs> ever adventurous life going on in my life right now, um, I had a flat last week on my bike. So I'm still grounded from running from that sprained knee. Um, so I was frustrated and so I was like, okay, I have a bike. I have a bike in the garage. So my husband and I started going for a bike ride. And um, it was hard. Uh, and I was like, I don't understand how people bike for 150 miles. This is so hard. And my neighborhood's relatively flat. So I was like, I'm not even dealing with hills. And I was like, it's so hard. And then, um, I, of course, we were at the furthest point away from the house in, in the ride. And my tire went flat. So I was like, okay. Now, fortunately, we have a bike barn um, just, you know, literally a mile down the road. And so my husband on his day off on Friday took my, and he didn't tell me this <laughs> until today, but he took my bike down there. They replaced the inner tubes and apparently my, I, he used words that I don't even know about the bike. Uh, but there was a problem with my chain. And so, so it got, oiled and or greased or whatever and they adjusted the chain and they adjusted something else and they replaced the inner tubes on the tire because you know the tire was flat um and so we go for a ride this morning and I almost ditched him like I was riding so fast because my bike was it was amazing I was like oh this is why people ride for 150 miles now and of course we're almost at the furthest away point of the ride, and his tire goes flat. <laughs> and he was like, I was like, no, 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 you will damage the rim. You need to walk it home. Do you want me to walk with you? And he's like, no, go ride. Go ride, because clearly you're having fun. So uh, he let me go and ride, because... I'm the crazy one in the relationship. I'm the one who's like got to go exercise. You know, I'm the one that's going for the run and going for the walk. He goes along and he enjoys it, but he's not the one who's going to get up and say, let's go. That's me. So he's like, no, go get it out of your system. So it was great fun and I get it now. And I'm just like, oh, this is epic and amazing. I get it now. Um, I have an Eddie Bauer bike that I bought a hundred years ago and I bought it on clearance so I didn't pay that much for it. And it's like a seven speed. <laughs> Not that I have any idea what any of that means. But, um, and it's purple. <laughs> so it was like, this morning it was, it, it was almost like, you know, you, you keep, you, you work and you work and you work and others, you, you treat and you treat and you treat and you treat. And then one day it just flows. That's what the bike felt like this morning. Like just, I've been doing all, I, mm, it was so, yeah. So uh, that's what I'm grateful for today. I'm grateful for um, a husband who will take my bike and get it fixed <laughs> and then l turn me loose. Cause that's exactly what he does. It's like, he, he just turns me loose. He's like, okay, just go, just get it out of your system. <sighs> So, all right, it is um, November 24th. We are in the month of gratitude, and so these are things that we are grateful for. And today, we are grateful for intuition. Our Bible quote is, Before they call, I will answer, and while they are yet speaking, I will hear. And that is from Isaiah 65, 24. Um, Dr. Alexis Carroll tells us that intuition is not a product of the intellect, nor is it something that is, is developed in the process of our evolution. It is, then, a thing in itself. That which is instinct in the animal, blindly, unerringly leaving it to food, water, and shelter, becomes intuition in man. Con un um, consciously perceived. Instinct is intuition acting unconsciously. Intuition is instinct elevated to the point of self-awareness. <clears throat> they are identical. Intuition is omniscience. 
acting omnipresently. Therefore, whether or not we believe it, it is ever present within us. Today, I know that intuition, which is the presence of the divine mind in me, will guide me aright. It will set me on the path of right action. It will direct my footsteps. It will counsel my mind. Today, I am aware that there is a light that dispels ignorance, fear, superstition, and doubt, and sets me safe and sane on the pathway of truth. Okay, and from the Science of Mind text, the mind that we discover within us is the mind that governs everything. And that is from page 34 of the text. Okay. I have a lot of thoughts on intuition, and I'm not sure any of them are going to be coherent. So... <clears throat> And honestly, I'm not sure what the Bible quote has to do with intuition. <laughs> Other than it, it may be Ernest Holmes pointing out to us that intuition is a gift from God or a gift of the spirit. Um, intuition is an, an instinct has nothing to do with it, the intellect. I would say that it probably has something to do with wisdom um, because I think and wisdom is knowledge applied so not directly related to the intellect but the more we exercise our intellect the more experience we have the more we are the more likely we are to trust our intuition. Um, our brains are these amazing, and I'm going to use the word computers, um, they're these amazing organs that have the ability to filter through just amazing amounts of information to come up with an answer. Uh, look at whatever subject you're passionate about. I'm not going to say good at, good at, but whatever you're passionate about, um, anything. And just think about all of the information that you know about that and how readily a little bit of that information will come into your mind. That's how amazing that organ in your brain is. And that's one of the reasons why I get so about um, mental illness, about depression and anxiety and all of that, because this is an organ and it works so amazingly. And then occasionally it doesn't. And when it doesn't, you want to support that organ. Um, be that with diet, nutrition, medication, and what have you. Uh, and so, where does intuition come from? We have no idea. <laughs> to some degree, and it kind of sounds like it, we'll get back into that. Intuition is wired into us. Does it come from the brain? Does it come from the body? Does it come from the heart? Does it come from the soul? We don't know. But we do know that it does, that it's there and that it works. And it works really well. And it does, to a degree, come down to your level of trust. Um, how trusting are you of spirit and the world around you and your own relationship with spirit? And that's where intuition really comes from, is, is trust, trusting the process. Um, I have no idea who Dr. Alexis Carroll is. It's C-A-R-R-E-L, if you want to look him up. Um, I've never heard of that person. Uh, but Dr. Carroll tells us that intuition is not a product of the intellect, nor is it something that is developed in the process of our evolu evolution. And I, I, I don't know what to say, but I think intuition is something that you can practice. Um, I don't think anybody has more intuition than anybody else, but what I think is, is that people are, people with a lot of intuition are trusting of the intuition that they have, and people who don't think they have any intu intuition don't trust. Um, and that's my opinion, just my opinion, um, which is worth exactly what an opinion is worth. <laughs> so, uh... It is then a thing in itself. That which is instinct in the animal, blindly, unerringly, leading it to food, water, and shelter. Okay, so 
that's the def the definition that Ernest is using about instinct um, becomes intuition in man consciously perceived so it's like homing pigeons we have no idea how they do it and yet unerringly they can get where they're going the salmon when they do the salmon run we have no idea how they do it but unerringly they get where they're going instinct so we would say that's intuition but they're not but we don't know that they're doing it consciously I, I, I'm gonna say that we don't know that they're doing it consciously um, because we don't understand how conscious they are they could be as, just as conscious as we are but we have no way to measure that so there that's yeah um, so intuition is instinct elevated to the point of self-awareness uh, okay wait no instinct is intuition acting unconsciously and intuition is instinct elevated to the point of self-awareness we are aware of that still small voice within us that says turn here um, they're identical that is not an argument I ever thought I would make <laughs> so it's something to think about uh, intuition is omniscience I have never heard that word before omniscience I mean I know what it means but everywhere science uh, so intuition is omniscience acting omnipresently therefore whether or not we believe it it is ever present with this within us which is why I, I my statement of fact was um, that everyone has intuition the question is is if you don't think you have intuition that's because you're not listening or you don't trust that little voice in the back of your head um, which you know over the ages we have said it's you know spirit whispering to us or God whispering to us or uh, you know what your, the ancestors whatever it is in, in intuition so uh, we all have it are we listening because intuition is pretty quiet it is pretty quiet and so it's like it's and it happens in that moment it intuition doesn't give us time to think about it which is why I think he said it has nothing to do with the intellect because if we if our intuition speaks and we don't follow it in the moment then we overthink it then we start thinking about it and then it's not intuition anymore so um, one caution though uh, ego can man uh, can masquerade as intuition so uh, that and and that's where I think that's where the, the element of wisdom comes in about the element of knowing yourself to know it's like oh I want to I want to chalk this down to ego and it may not be or no I meant I'm sorry I want to chalk this down to intuition and it, it may not be it may be ego um, but that would be one where you look and see who it serves uh, not that into I mean intuition frequently is about us it's like what we should do but uh, just yeah there, there I think that, that would be a wise caution to, to just remember that ego can masquerade as or we can convince ourselves that our ego has told us something and we want to chalk it up to uh, intuition so the, that wisdom um, of, of Socrates is know thyself the more you know yourself the better you know yourself the deeper you know yourself the more likely you are to be able to distinguish between ego and intuition so uh, today I know that intuition which is the presence of the divine mind in me will guide me aright so he just laid it out right there everything I just said doesn't mean anything because intuition is the presence of the divine mind in me which means we have access to absolutely everything we need to do what we need to do if we're willing to trust and listen uh, it will set me on the path of right action it will direct my footsteps it will counsel my mind 
do we want to rely completely on intuition? Absolutely not. Because we have decisions to make and we need information to make those decisions. But there are times when we have all the information and we still can't make a decision. That might be a time for to, to get quiet, listen, and trust your intuition. Um, it will direct my footsteps. It will counsel my mind. Today, I await... I, hmm. Today... I am aware that there is a light that dispels ignorance, fear, and superstition and doubt and sets me safe and sane on the pathway of truth. And I love the fact that he says safe and sane. Um, because <laughs> ego will make us crazy. Ego will make us crazy and intuition will set us right and the ability to get quiet and listen and trust is definitely a pathway to sanity uh, the mind that we discover within us is the mind that governs everything um, we have access to the whole mind just not all at the same time uh, we have we are a this mind is a finite resource and in that finite resource it will uh it can't hold all of the mind it can't hold all of the information but if we are willing to relax and trust we will get access to exactly what we need exactly when we need it via instinct but it's a practice just like anything else. It is a muscle that we have to exercise. Um, it is muscle memory. It's about learning to trust. And it is about trusting spirit. It is about trusting God. Trusting that the information that you need will be available when you need it. All right. Um, so that is intuition. I, it, it, it's kind of a, it, it's kind of a funny story for me that I came into science of mind out of the psychic community. That's where I came from. So I already believed in and trusted instinct. I just, or sorry, intuition. I just needed to know where it came from. And that's how I landed in science of mind. Um, literally I, I turned to a friend of mine and said, I have got to find God. And she said, I know this place you can go. Uh, and Reverend Jesse has been an awesome guidepost. So, <laughs> I'm going to move into the process of my day. I'm going to encourage you to do something loving for yourself. Do something kind for yourself. Do something compassionate for yourself. And I will encourage you to do what I did. Well, what my husband did for me. If something is hard, then maybe something needs to be greased replaced or fixed uh, and that can be within you too that can be a belief that can be a practice that can be you know an exercise if it's hard then go back and look at the process because if it's hard it's not working right and you may be able to figure it out um, would I have known that my chain was a problem? No. But we took it to an expert and they said, your chain is a problem. And it's amazing now. So that can be taking, taking yourself in for repairs can be a loving, kind, and compassionate thing that you can do for yourself. So, all right. Uh, just going to use my bike metaphor there. Um, but it is fantastic out there right now. I mean, it's a little damp, but, you know, open your windows, get some fresh air. Do something to engage your mind and your body. Um, and do what you need to do to make it a fantastic day. Uh, our lives are, are wildly different than we expected them to be. This holiday is going to be wildly different than we expected it to be. I intend to rest. I hope that you will take some time to do that as well. Um, and... As always, open the windows of your soul. Allow the breath of heaven 
to remind you that you live in heaven now. It surrounds you always. It's about opening our eyes and our heart and our mind and seeing it. So remember that you are a beloved child of spirit in whom spirit is well pleased. Always. That is the state of grace that we live in. It's up to us to become aware of it. So I am going to remind you that Reverend David will be on with you around 5 p.m. today. I will be back with you at 9 a.m. Have a wonderful day, beloved.